Hi, I'm Christy Carrolls, and today I'll be providing you an overview of the MVision UCE console, as well as a brief demonstration of some of the common use cases we support. First, I want to talk about what UCE is. It stands for Unified Cloud Edge, and it brings together the unification of Web Protection and CASB from the McAfee portfolio. So what does this mean? Well, the biggest change here is that the Web Gateway Cloud Service Management has been converged into the MVision Cloud Console. This allows us to provide an offering that unifies the features and functions of workloads that can include shadow IT visibility with closed loop remediation and control, application control with features like activity control for unsanctioned services, and tenant restrictions for sanctioned services. We can do data protection for cloud services. We also offer zero-day malware prevention with our gateway anti-malware engine. The solution also supports IPsec site-to-service tunneling, and we can also provide McAfee client proxy configuration from within the console. First, let's go over the Unified Cloud Edge basic components on the basic SKU. There's a couple different components. You'll notice starting at the top, we have the Web Gateway Cloud Service. It's managed from within the MVision Cloud. It's our SaaS-based console. It is a globally available, true multi-tenant secure web cloud service. It's 5.9's SLA, which means we are only allowed to be down five minutes a year. We have the ability to filter web traffic without deploying hardware. And this is an important part specifically for our um, customers who want a fully cloud-based capability. But it also allows to connect branch office directly using IPsec, like we discussed before. McAfee Web Gateway Appliance Software is also something that we can optionally deploy uh, to hardware. It's either real hardware or virtual appliances, and it's included in the licensing SKU. We have the ability to also manage Web Gateway Cloud Service in a hybrid deployment scenario as well, which is one of our differentiators against our competitors. Note, deploying hardware is not a requirement. UCE is not currently available to manage hybrid environments. We have the McAfee Client Proxy and the McAfee Mobile Cloud Security App. MCP is an end-user transparent and tamper-resistant endpoint client that actually redirects all traffic to appliances or the cloud service. The MMCS, which is the cloud security for McAfee Mobile, it's a mobile solution that can establish VPN tunneling to the cloud infrastructure, allowing for traffic redirection via supported mobile device management platforms. It performs end-user authentication and allows a fully enforced scanning of web traffic. And last but not least, between the two solutions, we can support Windows desktops, servers, Mac OS, iOS, and Android apps. MVision Cloud Shadow IT is another piece. It provides visibility, risk assessment, threat analytics, automatic, automated and customizable reports and access control policy enforcement as well as content security reporter. So what this means is for existing customers, if they have EPO, it's an EPO embedded reporting solution for internet usage trending and policy enforcement reporting. Now that we understand the components of the UCE basic SKU, let's take a look at how a unified cloud edge solution addresses cloud security use cases. The first use case we're going to look at is activity controls. So now we've navigated over to the UCE console, should look familiar. It is the same console as MVision Cloud. Uh, again, that's the unification of our web services along with cloud itself. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about again is the activity control and one of the key capabilities of a forward proxy cloud access security broker, CASB, is the ability to control a user's activities within that cloud application. And the most common example of this is the ability to prevent uploads to unsanctioned services. So we have a couple examples that we've built into the policy for us to test and then we'll go and we'll look at how this actually works. So the way that we do this is we go over to policy. And then once we're in policy and we're looking at our web policy, let's go ahead to application control and activity control. And you'll notice some policies that have been set in here uh, are to block uploading to Dropbox, uh, stop chatting or posting uh, in Facebook, and then searching company posts within LinkedIn. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to log into Facebook. You'll get to see my Facebook account. And we will show you, oh, if I type it correctly, and we'll see that we have my Facebook account, 
and we're gonna go into the chat and let's go ahead and uh, chat with my brother here we go Jason Beagle and I want to go send him a note hi Jason how are you and you'll see this message failed to send uh, because of the fact that we are under that policy. It's redirecting my cloud capabilities and it's blocking the ability for me to chat within Facebook. Again, if we go back under policy, you'll notice that it would be the same thing if I wanted to upload something to Dropbox. So let's go ahead and go back over to Dropbox and I'm going to try to upload a file. And it doesn't really matter what file it is. I can just say christy.doc.txt and I'm gonna open this. And you'll notice that it tries to upload, but nothing happens. Um, and this is a, the reason behind this is because of the fact that we are, again, redirecting. I'm uploading zero of two files, I have two errors. If we view those details, again, this was my test previously, um, but it won't, it won't upload. And again, it's based on the fact that we have this policy in place to block any uploading into Dropbox because these are unsanctioned services services and we don't want people being able to do this. Now an interesting part to this is if we go outside of um, this controlled system that's running MCP on it, I would be able to do that. So again, these are these controlled systems that we're able to block and uh, help modify uh, the ability for, thing, for things to be posted or up, updated, uploaded. Now we'll take a look at the next use case, DLP classification and scanning. Data security is the cornerstone of Unified Cloud Edge. So part of protecting an organization's data is ensuring that sensitive data is not uploaded to an unsanctioned cloud service. What we're going to do is we're actually going to show how we're able to use UCE for data security and web traffic. So we've moved back over to the Envision UCE console. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the data classification rules by going to policy, web policy, and then clicking into the policy. And then from here, we're going to go to the data protection DLP. And we will go to the data DLP classification rules. Uh, you'll note that the rule to block the transfer of data based on data classification, which is actually a pre-built classification provided by McAfee, is actually checked. And if we look to the right-hand side, we'll see that the PCI classification is selected. So let's go ahead and click on this and we'll see what that actually is. You'll notice that PCI has to do with things such as the payment card industry, and then it's the bulk credit card numbers and violations and information such as, such as that. So it's going to be blocking based on PCI classification data. So now let's go ahead and look at the demonstration. And the way we're going to do this is that we're actually going to uh, log into my personal OneDrive account. And you'll see I have a personal OneDrive account here. That's me, Chucky Shu. Um, and I've downloaded a test file. If we go ahead and look into this test file, it's sample data CSV. And remember, it's the credit card classification. So um, this sample data is going to have credit card information in it and it's going to block me from updating and uploading this into my OneDrive. So you'll see here it's got personal information, social security numbers, and credit card information here as well. We'll close that. Um, but we're actually going to test to try and upload this. And so I'm in my personal OneDrive account. I'm going to click Upload, File, and I'm going to go into my Downloads and choose Oops, downloads and choose that sample data. I'm going to open that. And you're going to notice it says uploading to my file and it's taking its good old time. So to prove that this is actually being blocked is I'm going to try and upload a non-PCI violating file. I'll go to files and I will go into my documents. It's that Christy doc and it just says test information and I'm going to open that up. And you'll notice that's uploaded and it appears in my OneDrive. So uh, this one is still being trying to upload, it will get the error message and error out, but you'll notice that this DLP policy is applied and it blocked uploading based on that classification. So another way that we can protect your data moving to and from the cloud. All right, so um, we will move on to the next use case, which is risk-based application blocking or closed loop remediation. Uh, the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to show how we can block sites based on uh, something being a risky application. So again, let's move over to the MVision console. We've navigated back to the MVision cloud and UCE console. And here we're going to talk about something different. Again, it's that risk-based application blocking. So the uh, reason why we want to do this is part of securing an organization's cloud usage is being able to attribute risk to cloud apps. 
Uh, McAfee Solution has had a long ability to do this and to see what applications are in use and show various risk attributes for those services. So with the release of UCE, we can now directly action risky applications in the web policy, which is actually really important. And we're going to show this now. So we're looking at our demo, uh, demo tenant, and we've defined a list of services that present a particular legal risk. So in this demo, demo tenant, we're going to go to governance and then service groups. Um, and so you'll notice that we've defined a list of service groups and they can claim ownership of intellectual property uploaded um, based on how they allow you to upload. So this basically is a legal risk of your data being up in the cloud. You know, it's a PDF converter or something along those lines. So what we'll show is how we have something called legal risk. And if we click on this service group called legal risk, we'll notice that the ownership policy means the service provider or the the actual service itself. Again, if we're doing a PDF converter and you upload your data to convert it to Word, um, in their terms of service it might say that they now own your data. So that's actually very risky to be uploading your data. So we want to block that. So under governance again, we want to show that under the cloud registry, we'll see that there's different types of um, sites that allow this to happen. And under this cloud registry, we're actually going to search this and I'll show you one that does it. Source Forge, and you'll notice SourceForge is under that legal risk service group. So when we actually go back and we look at the policy, so again we're going to define a policy based on this legal risk in the service group. So we'll go to policy itself, oh, and it loads, application control, and then application blocking. And here you'll see legal risk is blocking anything that poses a legal risk for us to be able to upload and that service provider owns that information. So the way we should test this is if we go to a new site, we're going to go to www.sourceforge.com. And you'll notice the content you requested is blocked by your organization's security policy. If I go to my non-demo tenant VM and I go to www.sourceforge.com, forge.com. You'll notice I am able to go based on the fact that I'm not being controlled. This is uh, my own personal computer and I can go and I can upload all I want with reckless abandon. Uh, so anyway, this is a way that you can control the data that's being uploaded as well as uh, application blocking based, based on different classifications. So Our next topic ahead. is tenant restrictions. While blocking unsanctioned applications is a powerful tool, risk exists even within sanctioned applications as well. So one of the potential risks is that users may go to a sanctioned app, such as Office 365, but they're not logged into the organization's tenant. They may be attempting to log into maybe a personal or unsanctioned account. So tenant restrictions is the ability to control what accounts and tenants users are allowed to use and log in with even though it's within a sanctioned application. Uh, so we actually have a tenant restriction put in place for Office 365 and we're going to go ahead and show how we do that. So we'll navigate over to our MVision console. And here we are in the MVision console and we're looking at the main dashboard. So we will go to the policy and the web policy and from here we're going to navigate back over to application control and we will look at tenant restrictions now. So you'll notice that the rules applying to the traffic is block personal instance of Microsoft Office 365. So uh, when we actually go to log in, you'll notice if I navigate over to log in, I'll say, hey, sign in as Christy. This is a, a sanctioned area. Um, we can actually see this by clicking on this and you'll notice that it specifically calls out Okta.SkyHighDemo.Cloud as my allowed tenant. So let me close this and then we'll navigate over and you'll say, notice it's the Okta Sky High Demo. Cloud. And I'm going to log in as me, and I should be able to log in just fine. And let's go ahead and log in. Sure, let's go ahead and stay stay logged in. But you'll notice it's there's no issue. There's no issue with me logging in to any of my Office 365 as Christy from Okta. Um, but if I want to try and sign out of this one and log in with a personal account. I'm going to sign out. You notice then I'm going to get an error saying I can't get there. All right, so let's go ahead and go back in and log into 
is 365. And I am going to log in. Let's hear. Let's sign in. Here we go. So it's trying to log in as someone else and it says, hey, looks like you can't get there from here. You're trying to access a resource that belongs to an organization that's not approved by your IT department. So we're getting the error message stating that I'm not logging into the correct tenant and it's blocking me from going there. So again, even though it's a sanctioned application, I've been blocked from accessing where I'm going because of the fact that I have those rules in place. All right, we're getting to the end of our demonstration. We have two more pieces left. And the next thing we're going to look at is URL category filtering. That's right, so when you think about a web filtering solution of any kind, category-based blocking is likely the first thing that comes to mind. Block by something bad, block by some sort of topic you don't want. McAfee's web protection technology has been a leader in this for many, many years, and therefore the UCE, Unified Cloud Edge Solution, inherits the same massive data and intelligence that McAfee has built over the past many years. So in this lab, we're going to show you how you can actually granularly apply uh, based on who the user is and where they are, and that's the important part. So let's go ahead and go back to the console. So again, we're back in the dashboard, and let's go ahead and look at policy. And under the web policy, you'll notice that there are, uh, when it loads, three web filtering elements, web filtering on-prem, remote, and privileged. The on-prem policy applies to all traffic coming from uh, within uh, a location, so here we're doing it within our mDemo console. A remote means that it's traffic from outside of mDemo or outside of our location, and then privileged specifically applies to anyone who is a member of a domain admins group. Um, and this policy overrides both on-prem and remote policies. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. You'll notice that we look at the category risk and geo, we have uh, block traffic for these different categories. And if we look at this, it's actually a pretty extensive list, things such as gambling, games, uh, etc. And it goes pretty far down, right? Uh, potentially unwanted programs, consumer protection, anonymizers, things like the Tor network, right, are some of those things that are lumped into there. Uh, but if we go into the privileged group, same item and block traffic for these categories, you're going to know that it's a much less extensive uh, list. We don't have anything for uh, gambling. We don't have any games in here. We do have pups in there, but we also don't have uh, other types of um, ones we saw in the previous list, so it's a much shorter list. That's all we're seeing. So uh, privilege means it's people outside or the uh, or those people who are in the admins group um, are the least restrictive. So within our mDemo or our tenant right here, we're actually going to navigate to Tor Project. Remember anonymizers. Anonymizers are things like the Tor project, like I specifically called that before. Uh, it is blocked. Same with things like going to maybe Hulu. Let's see. Hulu.com. Also blocked. And you'll notice it says categories blocked uh, by your organization's security policy. So there are a number of different things that we can't get to, such as Pandora can't get there as well. So uh, you'll notice that it is a very restrictive policy that we can't get to. Um, if I go outside, again, I'm not being controlled. I can go to Tor Project, all I want, and I can go check this out because it's not being controlled by uh, other capabilities. I'm going to log out of here as a standard user. Let's see if I can just switch users. And I'm going to log in as an administrator. And you're going to notice it has a completely different capability of doing this. So let's log in as another user. And type in my password. And even though I'm still on my demo site, remember I'm just switching users. I'm going to be able to get to that Tor website as well. Because remember, it has a completely different restriction level. So let's go ahead and log into Chrome. And dub 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 dot Tor projects dot org. 
and I can serve with reckless abandon. Again, because I'm an administrator and the restrictions on me are much less strict. So hopefully that was a good demonstration on how we are able to uh, block using URL ca category filtering. So next we're going to move into our last topic. Anti-malware. That's right. Uh, something McAfee has been doing for a very long time, but we also want to show how McAfee's web protection technology has many layers of malware protection, including things such as that URL categorization, uh, GTI or our Global Threat Intelligence Database, against the database uh, that shows a risk of sites, and it's what we've learned over the last 30 years of being a business, the standard McAfee AV, and then even our gateway into a malware engine, which is our emulation sandboxing in real time. So um, let's go ahead and navigate back over to the Envision console, and we will uh, take a look at that. So again, we're back over to the Envision console, and we are going to look at the web filtering policy. So let's go back into the policy itself. And from here, we're going to look at that multi-layered approach. Um, and instead of testing live malware, we're going to just review the policy in uh, a couple different steps that we're going to go through, showing that multi-levered approach. First, we're going to go back into that web filtering on-prem policy, category risk geo. And from here, remember we looked at the block traffic for these specific categories. And it was that very extensive list of different categories we were looking at, things such as you know, gambling, games, uh, sports, spyware, adware, potentially hacking sites, etc. Um, but it's something that McAfee's been doing really well for a very long time. So let's go ahead and cancel out of here. Um, and we looked at some of those blocked categories. And then next, let's go ahead and look down here to the next section where it talks about blocking traffic for malware risk categories based on GTI analysis. And remember, GTI is our Global Threat Intelligence Database. It's our database that has uh, the knowledge of what we've known about malware for the past, you know, umpteen 30 years, um, and we are able to block on what we consider high risk and medium risk sites for that GTI analysis. Um, and this is actually really helpful because of the fact that you're able to use McAfee's uh, intelligence from what we've learned to do this URL categorization. Next, you'll see that for uncategorized sites, which is down at the bottom, we are um, taking a completely different approach. You'll see certain media types are being blocked and we can actually click on this to see those media types. So things such as uh, Dream Factory, iPhone compatible capabilities, um, but we're blocking media types for uncategorized files. And so what that does is it helps us block of what we don't know or if it's something that might be potentially malicious. Um, we can block that as well. So, you know, uploads are also being blocked, which prevents not only sensitive data from going up, here we go, block uploads as well, um, for uncategorized traffic, right? So if we're sending it to an unknown site, we can also prevent users from logging into those sites. And we're actually very highly effective at preventing users' credentials from being fished as well. So um, it's really interesting how we have this. We have the ability to add this checkbox to filter script tags. They're being removed, which is a powerful step to prevent malicious JavaScript from compromising browsers. So this is an interesting one as well. So um, we can look at our default GTI setting. Right now, you'll notice that we have uh, a couple different areas within GTI. Don't forward DNS lookups. Do not uh, do a backward DNS lookup for different URLs. But it enables us to utilize the GTI settings to also filter that traffic. Next, let's go ahead and look at threat protection. Because again, we were looking at those web filtering rules. We'll look at the anti-malware rules themselves. And we look at the anti-malware rule, you'll notice that we have the GAM engine rules, which is our emulation engine. Um, it's a sandboxing technology that is a real-time protection from known and unknown threats. And then you can also configure different exceptions, etc. Um, but you'll notice that uh, we have skip GAM processing for certain agents, skip processing for certain domains and hosts. But then we're able to also look at the current configuration of the default gateway. And right now we have turned on optimum coverage, a combination of anti-malware and anti-malware engines to filter known and unknown threats. And we have it set to a threshold of 90. Uh, that means that it's a very high likelihood of a file being malicious and we will then block that file. So uh, hopefully this gave you a good overview of the different types of capabilities we have to block malicious files and that we are using a layered approach to not only use standard AV, but then also our other uh, advanced capabilities as well. 
I did think of one way that we can test this. It's through the ICAR page. It's um, non-malicious code that you can down download. So let's go ahead and go to uh, the download site. We'll click on download for the test file. And if I scroll down, it doesn't really matter which one I pick, but if I go ahead and click one of these files, you'll notice if I click on that, you'll notice that the content I requested was blocked and it's based on policy by McAfee. So that's the interesting part. It's a very easy way for us to demonstrate it being blocked. Thanks for watching my demo video. This is an exciting time for our Unified Cloud Edge technology, and this is only the beginning. Please stay tuned and look forward to more capability and functionality to keep your customers safe. Thanks again. Have a great day.